Hey, Mitch, come and record the Drift Dad. All right. Today's episode is brought to you in part by Drift Outfitters in downtown Toronto, Ontario. Drift Outfitters is your source for all things fly fishing. Waders and boots to thread and feathers, Drift has it all. Check in on their website for the latest updates and policies regarding shopping during the pandemic. Curbside pickup for your online and phone orders is a great way to get the gear you need. And they're shipping for free across Canada on orders over 100 bucks. Visit driftoutfitters.com to learn more. Driftoutfitters.com. Hello and welcome to another episode of SoFly. It is uh, the end of March and we're back recording another episode. And uh, my name is Mitch. We've got Aldo. Hello. And we've got Yelma. Hello, everyone. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. we got a, a really special guest on the show today. Um, Kip Veith has been fly fishing for over 39 years, cutting his teeth, pursuing trout on the spring creeks of the Driftless region in southwest Wisconsin. Now Kip lives in Minnesota and is the owner of Wildwood Float Trips based out of Monticello. There he guides for a number of species from driftless trout to smallmouth bass and even the toothy, beastly musky. He offers a western-style fishing experience with drift boat floats down the Midwest's many rivers and streams. Wildwood Float Trips is also the outfitter for the Orvis Musky School, and Kip is an Orvis fly designer. Kip and his business have been featured in Minnesota Bound, Orvis, uh, Orvis Outdoor Adventures, In the Drake, The Orvis Blog, Outdoor News, Midwest Fly Fishing, and Eastern, Southwest, and Northwest Fly Fishing Magazines. Kip is also the author of The Orvis Guide to Muskies on the Fly, a book about fly fishing muskie. And to cap it all off, Kip was the Orvis Freshwater Guide of the Year in 2017. Now he's joining us on the show. Kip, welcome. Thanks a lot. Glad to be here. Yeah, thanks for coming yeah, on. Glad We're glad to have you. Excited to chat. No doubt. Thanks, <laughs> thanks for reaching out. Yeah, um, the book is relatively new, which is pretty cool because at about the same time the book came out, Yilma caught his very first muskie on the fly. So it's, all right, uh, that's so awesome. It's really like yeah. uh, it's fitting. It's fitting the, the timeline. You know. Good yeah. for you. Yeah, a thousand casts isn't uh, hyperbole at all. No, no, no. Ten thousand actually, but you know, yeah. if you do it a thousand, <laughs> exactly. you're better off. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, Kip, thanks for joining us. Where, where are you calling from today? I'm in Monticello, so I'm in Monticello, Minnesota, which is about an hour northeast of the Twin Cities. So I'm right on the banks of the Upper Mississippi. Uh, I've got 13 acres right on the river. So um, we moved from the Twin Cities to get closer up here where I fish a lot. So it made it a little bit more um economically friendly i wasn't driving back and forth from the cities and sitting in traffic all night so yeah yeah uh, yeah it's 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 been great i've been here uh, 10 years now 11 years something like that so okay right on right yeah on. and how's the fishing there this time of year are you fishing at all or no it's closed it uh they keep it open until the end of february yep. and i don't do the winter thing but there's a lot of guys that do we have a nuke plant north of town and it kind of keeps it open and warm and uh the guys do pretty well that are into it, but I fish them all summer. I don't need to fish them in the winter and freeze. I kind of enjoy my couple months off, so that's kind of where I'm at with that. Yeah, for sure. Um, nor like if it wasn't COVID, would you be doing some traveling right about now? Like maybe some fishing traveling or just? I I went to Belize uh, this year actually twice, so oh, nice. um, I did roll the dice. We went last year right in the middle of it, like exactly. We got kicked out of Belize a day early because they were shutting her down on Monday when we thought we better get out of there before we got stranded. So um, so basically this trip was a makeup trip, but it went pretty smoothly. Um, I, you know, it all depends on your comfort level, I guess, but I thought it was pretty smooth. They, you, you tested, you can test right at home here in Minnesota. They'll mail you a kit, you spit in a vial, you send it in, and next thing you know, you're... A day later, you get your test results back, and you can jump on a plane. So, oh, really? um, and then when you get there, they check to make sure you're tested and all that stuff. And then when you're ready to go, they all the resorts want your money. They want you to be down there, so they send someone into the resort. They test you right at the resort, and it, you know if you have to stay, you have to stay, I guess. But mm -hmm. um, everyone that I went with, and there, I don't think any of the resorts have had to keep anyone for the two weeks or 10 days or whatever it is. So it was really pretty simple. And for the last trip, we had a direct right out of Minneapolis to Belize. So it was oh. everyone that was on the plane was tested negative, which that I know that's not a hundred percent, but 
Yeah. Like I tell my friends, it's I feel more comfortable on that plane than I do walking into Target or something, you know, because <laughs> at least everyone's Absolutely. had a test on it, right? So, but yeah, it was pretty smooth. It wasn't, uh, you know, I was a little apprehensive the first trip in mid February, but the second one was, it was really easy. I mean, it was, yeah, it was nice to get out of here. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I bet. Oh God. Yeah, it seems like a a little bit of an easier. Uh, process and we have to we we got COVID tested for uh, a trip we took up north ice fishing and uh, it was a bit of not not so easy <laughs> yeah it, it was I was surprised I went in and got tested too so I did the at home one and then I did I went in just to make sure I was covered so um, but they all came back mm-hmm. both at the same time and so it was pretty I probably had eight COVID tests now so I dodged a bullet and I got my first shot last week so I should be Oh, nice. Knock on wood. I hopefully I'm, I'm okay to go. So, yeah. Right on. Well, how was Belize? How was the fishing? It was The first trip was good. Um, they both were really, really good. But the second trip, the weather was a little shaky. Um, I did get a grand slam, but it wasn't a big one or anything. But it, it was still a grand slam. So, um, yeah, so I caught my first permit this year. Last year, I didn't get one. Um but I got a big one in at a Pescador. Um, a couple weeks ago, I got a twenty pounder, so it was pretty. And that was pretty badass. So it was like, it was cool. So and I got about a fifteen pounder, fourteen pounder down in February. So, but Whoa. yeah, so that one was kind of cool because I could see it tailing pretty good and it ate, and that was yeah. that was kind of a little better experience. But the twenty pounder was pretty, pretty cool too. So that was a special experience. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was neat. Uh, yeah. Awesome, Kip. Um, okay, why don't we go back to the beginning then? Like, how did you get into fly fishing sure. at all? How'd that all begin? Um, I was a. I grew up in southern Wisconsin, right on the Illinois border, and I had a friend whose dad was in a kind of worm dunking just to catch trout to eat. So he would take us over to the Driftless because we could get five more trout. Basically, I think that was the only reason he took us, you know, because he had five more trout we could get, but. I learned a worm fish for him there, and, you know, we'd go every spring for a couple of weeks or whatever. You know, we it wasn't a big, big deal. Um, but that's kind of how I learned to drift us a little bit, and that was probably three or four years. And then as I had older, one of my buddy's brother, who I didn't really know that well, bought a fly rod to worm fish. And we and I said, oh, I'll take you over there. So we I kind of guided him over there, and he had this fly rod, and he was worm fishing with it, and I went, well, why wouldn't you just learn to fly fish if you had a fly rod? And he's like, well, I, don't, I don't want to do that, you know. But I was like looking at it going, it looks pretty cool, actually. So that's how it started. I got a fly rod that next uh, Christmas, and the rest is history, and the debauchery proceeded. So, yeah. <laughs> that's a good way to get into it, though. Yeah, I mean, yeah. what was it about fly fishing that, uh, you know, that had you kind of excited? You know, that's a good question. I'm not really – I think it was just something different because I had done it. I mean, I, I've grown up my um, great grandmother owned a resort in northeast Wisconsin. That's where the wildwood comes from. It was called Wildwood Retreat. So I spent a lot of time up there at fish. We'd go to Ontario fishing with my parents and the uncles and all that stuff on our annual walleye trip. So I, you know, I grew up in it, but it was just something different. And I didn't know anything about it. Um, I hadn't really. You know, the kids and people are people that are getting into today are so blessed with YouTube and, oh, for sure. you know, everything's on there. I mean, we had nothing, you know, I mean, you just you picked up a flyer and you just started waving it around and hopefully it went somewhere, you know. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, so I, I just, you know, I thought it would be a cool way to fish. And like I said, the rest was kind of history. And it's, uh, I don't know, you know, maybe a higher being is pointing me in the right, right direction or something. I don't know. But, mm-hmm. uh yeah, that's kind of how it happened. I love it, yeah. You took annual yeah. trips up here to Ontario to fish walleye when you were a kid. Yeah, not uh, annual, but, you know, probably every couple of years uh, we would go up there and uh, not too far off. You know, we'd do Rainy Lake and the Seine River was the one river we went to. And my dad was a typical Midwestern walleye guy, um, trolling Rapalos and, mm-hmm. um, you know, that's, that was the deal, you know. Sounds so. familiar. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So that's, yeah. So that, and, and my uncle was a fly fisherman. Now that you mention it, um, I just thought of the story. But we were up there, and there was a smallmouth jumping over this log, eating flies. 
And it was just, you know, you could time it almost perfect. So my uncle's out there with his flyer. I think he had like a five weight. I don't even know what it was. It was, you know, that was maybe six or seven. And he was trying to time his fly to hit the, when the bass would come up. So the fly would be in the air right when the bass jumped. Well, he, you know, about 80 times and finally he hit it and it just hit the fly and kept right on going, you know, and it was like, maybe, maybe subconsciously, subconsciously. that's what brought me to fly fishing. But yeah. So, yeah, it sounds like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, Kip, I, I've got a question cause I don't actually know. Uh, what is the driftless region? Okay, so it's a section um, in the, it would be, trying to do my uh, directions here, southwest Wisconsin, southeast Minnesota, and north, no, it would be, yeah, northeast Iowa. And there's a little sliver in Illinois, but we don't count it because it's, like, tiny. But it's where a spot where no glaciers ever went. So the whole area around here is all glaciers, except for this corner in the, in, all three of those states so it's you know it's an old mountain range that's been eroded for millions of years so it's really a coolie and right. big big valleys with these spring creeks going through them there's more spring creeks in the um driftless area than any other place in the world so every valley's pretty much got a spring creek in it so if you like spring creek fishing tactical stuff Whoa. um watercrest really but, you know, I mean, there's some big fish in there, but there's also just a ton of, you know, 14, 16 inch brown trout, you know, and there's some brookies and stuff like that. But yeah, it's a pretty, it's kind of the big buzz down here now. Everyone's trying to kind of travel and spend for the last two or three years. The, drift, the TU did a kind of a restorative, they've got like a driftless fund that they, they're redoing, you know, a lot, doing too many streams in my opinion, but. You know, I'd, I'd like for them to leave a few of them wild and where they grow really big fish and it's hard and all that. Mm -hmm. But um, mm -hmm. but it's a pretty special place. I mean, that's where I grew up. And if you can catch a big trout in a driftless, you can catch a big trout anywhere because they're very they're, – they're, they're hard fish. I mean, it's not it's not easy. Yeah, so, exactly. I'll take yeah. a 15, 16-inch brown trout any day. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's just a ton of them down there. I mean, yeah. it's just – it's pretty amazing. What is the work TU uh, is doing, you said? You said you kind of wish they were doing a little bit less, but what is it that they're doing again? Re yeah, I mean, they're doing a bunch of restoration down there, which is good. You know, they do the undercut banks and all this stuff. And um, Minnesota has a tax that, uh, kind of a sales tax that goes to, like, parks. And right. it's called the Lassard Fund, and it's just millions of dollars every year that either go to, like, trails or, you know, and – you gets about two million a year out of that thing. Wow! So they're just, you know, they got to spend it or lose it. So they're just trying to, right. you know, they're doing all these streams. But what they're doing is clearing them all and they turn them into what I call golf course fishing. If you guide, it's awesome because there's no trees, there's nothing. It's just a big pasture, and if you have a new guy in there, you don't have to worry about them. Yeah, you know, casting. the back cast yeah. unless it gets late in the summer and the grass gets tall and all that stuff. But mostly go through cow pastures. Um, you know dairy farms and stuff like that and they've redid all the banks where the cows have kind of eroded them and stuff so they do it does a lot of good but there are some you know lower parts of the wa those waterways that i would think they would just kind of leave alone and just make them spooky and deep and dark and you know those big brown trout areas so yeah that'd be cool yeah. if they did that for sure yeah like not necessarily a fishy part of the river to eat for you to fish but just to protect the fish themselves yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, that's where those big fish, they like those, you know, especially in the spring and the fall when the, the water temps drop, um, they like those deep, dark, they're carnivores, you know. They're down there looking for crayfish and sculpins and stuff. Mm -hmm. They're not looking to sip a size 18 BWO, so. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely not. You know, so that's kind of, that's one of my beefs, but, you know, what? it's still pretty damn good, so. Yeah, hey, you know, I, I hear you. Yeah. I know what you mean. <laughs> Um, okay, so when did guiding start? Be. Like, how'd you get into guiding? Like, when did that whole thing begin? Well, I've just always kind of been the guy that planned the trip or did the, you know, that type of thing. And um, my buddies would always, you know, be hung over and want, didn't want to go. And I'd be pounded on their door, you know, 6 a.m., let's go, let's go, you know. <laughs> yeah. There'd be notes on the door, like, I'm not going today, you know. And I'm like, you, you know, I got, <laughs> you idiot. I was just as, you know, I had as much fun as you did that night, but I got out of bed, you know, so. Totally. Um, 
Yeah, so, and then it just is kind of in my blood. I mean, I just, my like I said, my great-grandmother owned a resort. And so I just kind of, it just kind of fell into it. And I really got into it just because of the boat more than anything. So I went out to Yellowstone in 91, hmm. took a float trip down the Yellowstone and fell in love with a drift boat. So hmm. I said, I'm, one of these days I'm going to have a drift boat. So I got one. And then I, you know, it was just a natural kind of involved into guiding it. Yeah. Once you get a drift boat? You just turn into a guide. That's kind of how it works. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, buy a hide, be a guide. Isn't that the saying for I think guys? But, buy a uh, hide, be yeah, a guide. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> if it isn't their slogan, it probably should be. Yeah, no, it isn't. But, you know, I'm a clacker guy, so, of course, it's, you know. Oh, yeah, clacker yeah, craft. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love so. it. So when yeah. you were guiding, you said you were guiding down there, right? When you bought that drift boat, that's where you started guiding? No, yeah, I did some stuff down there. I didn't really start guiding, like, hardcore until I moved up. To Minnesota, because we really didn't. Have, you know, I grew up in a small, you know, fifty thousand people. There wasn't a fly shop anywhere, and mm-hmm. you know, so when I moved up here, there was a couple fly shops. I started kind of being a bum in the, the shops and stuff, and then um, I started doing some trout stuff for them, um, and then it just kind of grew from there. You know, so I, I got the boat, and like I said, the rest is history. But yeah, yeah, I'm kind That's of a awesome. warm water. You know, I've always been a warm water guy over kind of like you guys. I've listened to a few of your podcasts and it's like, yeah, we'll go trout fishing, but my heart's kind of with the uh, warm water stuff. I think yeah. it's, there's more of it. It's more fun, I think. It's I mean, a long, I love for us, fishing. it's a longer season. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Too, yeah. 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 Muskie goes to a lot of ice here, basically. So um, it runs in in November, but usually there's ice by then. So yeah, for us here, Muskie's like, Kind of, kind of the same time as um, it gets an extended season, but it's at the same time as like the Great Lakes steelhead. So it's always like, okay, are we gonna do? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That fall yeah. steelhead run kind of lines up perfectly with the best musky fishing of the year. So exactly, yeah. Yeah. exactly. But we did see, both last can, year, so I think we'll have to do that again. Yeah, you can sit in a boat and not freeze your butt off musky fishing, as opposed to standing in a river and freezing. And, and, and you know, if, if you're a good musky angler, it's about as good as you are as a steelhead too. So it's about a push. Probably. Yeah, but pretty much. Exactly. I'd rather be you know, ten degrees warmer, I guess, than you know, st- standing in a river. But, yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm one for one. So you're correct. It's just as much casting. So yeah, yeah, pretty much. Probably steelhead's a little easier, but yeah, yeah, it's probably. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, you know, that kind of takes us into, um, uh, well, first of all, I guess like what makes, you know, guiding in the Midwest unique, is it just that warm water fishery that it presents? Uh, it's a pretty cool, you know, cause I start, you know, my season's like trout right away. And then I do about two, you know, I don't do a ton of it. I'd probably do three, four weeks of that. And most of it's like a two week slot where I have like two big hosted trips in there and then I plug in around it and everything. And then once that ends, then it's May. And then my five, one of my favorite fish is bluegills and I mess around with them for a couple of weeks. And then, um, and then bass season starts and then I'm rolling a boat for bass pretty much every day until mid September. And then it's musky season. And the way I put it is, okay, when trout season's kind of over, I'm kind of sick of it already anyway. And then probably my favorite thing to guide for smallmouth. So and that's the longest season. But once that cold spell hits and they get kind of tough, then it's musky season. I'm ready for them. And then by ice, I'm kind of tired of muskies too because they're such a pain. But um, <laughs> get you, know, you to please. Yeah. Yeah. And then I do. Yeah. This. No. Oh, then I go to redfish for a week mm. or four days, usually down New Orleans. And then nice. it's Christmas. And then next year. I was supposed to go this year, but COVID got me. I'm, I'm hosting a trip in Argentina for Orvis, and then and then Man. two weeks in Belize. So I got a pretty good dance card this uh, this year. So coming up at least, I was supposed to this year, but most of it went away. So yeah, so that was pretty sweet. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty fortunate <laughs> that way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it's just a good mix. It's um, the fishing's fantastic. I mean, it's a really really good fishery and. Yeah, so I'm just pretty blessed to live where I am at, I guess, you know. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, we'll get to the Argentina thing later because I was like, you said Argentina, and I was like, what? Yeah, I've never been there. So, you know, they asked me, where would you like to go next? And I went, I'd like to do Argentina sometime. Would you like to host, <laughs> you like to host for us? And I went, 
Let me think about that. Yeah, okay, I'll do that. You know, so, yeah. yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Twist my arm a little harder. Right? Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. So, so why did I Kip, why did I lose so many musky when I went? Can you tell me? <laughs> <laughs> Please. You want the honest yeah, it's, truth or you want this? Yeah. Honest truth for sure. You probably <laughs> suck. You know? <laughs> yeah, true that. One of my buddies got you know, I'm a Cub fan. Yeah. So when Madden was there, they had T-shirts that said "Suck Less," right? Yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah. Right. So then Brad, the guy up in Hayward. Has stickers that say "suck less" yeah. on them, you know. And I'm like, it's about perfect for muscle fishing because <laughs> yeah. we all suck because we all do it, right? I mean, it's just it's not. I don't care how good you are, yeah. you're gonna suck, you know. But yeah. it, everything's got it's it's. My first trip to Belize, I was I was guided by Lincoln Webster, who's probably the best permit guide in the world, right? And him and I were chatting. I mean, I fished with him for a week. It was just fantastic, you know. If I didn't That's catch awesome. a fish, I wouldn't have cared because it was just. Mm-hmm. talking guiding and permit and then comparing them to muskies and it was like um i was telling somebody the other day i go if per- he could probably come up here and guide muskies and i could probably go down there because they're the fish are the same they're just a pain you know where so um it, but it really comes down to the fish everything being perfect and you strip setting mm-hmm. that's what it comes down to yeah. so you probably lifted your rod how many times T- 10 in a row before you finally went oh shit i better yeah, you know, yeah, nice yeah. Trout, trout setting, right? And it's yeah, just really exactly. hard to get that. Now, you guys should be better at it because you're warm water dudes, right? But, um, yeah, I mean, that's, think. that's think, usually yeah. what, when guys miss fish with me, it's usually because they lifted the rod. You know, if you lift the rod, yeah. you lose it. So they tell them. So keep the rod tip in the water about a foot and a half. And then when you go to lift it, you'll go, oh, shit. Yeah. And then I got to keep it there. And then, then you can, you know, because they're not going to drop, they're not going to let it go. I mean, they eat exactly. it, and they're going to be there until they don't feel something right. But, I mean, think about a – yeah, and then they'll fight, and boom. I mean, if you can wait, you know, let them turn around and then jab them, get them going away from your side. And that's the hardest thing. If they're coming at you, you're so jacked up to have one eat that you can't catch up to them. I mean, you're better off just – Laying the rod down, lighting a cigarette, and letting them turn, and then yeah. bam, then hit them, you know. So, but <laughs> luck with that, you know, I can't do it. But yeah, so that's that's pro- I don't know, not knowing what happened. That's probably what I would tell you. So yeah, no, I think that makes a lot of sense. There was a couple times where you know, and I think he all even had a couple bumps where it's like, well, they're hitting it and they're pulling, but why did the hook come out? You know what I mean? Even though we're strip setting, it's like they're just teasing with us. Did you drill them good? Yeah, I don't know. Did you strip set them <laughs> good or did you just half ass it? Yeah, just, you know, exactly. I don't know. You know? Hey man, don't put this on me, man. Like I didn't get <laughs> no, asking, you, you got all the hits. You got all the hits. I didn't get anything. Yeah, yeah. I'm even just there, saying. I mean, that's, don't, don't pawn this off on us, guys, yeah. I've had guys drill them, and I mean drill them. Yeah, yeah. You know, and the b- fish will come to the boat, and you went, that's a caught fish, and they'll open the mouth, the fly will come out, and they swim away because huh. they clamp down on that fly so hard. If you don't get that thing yeah. right. And you, you know, you can't strip set it hard enough to drive it through their jaw to put that hook in the side of because they're just they're like an alligator, right? Yeah. They're just they have so much pressure on that fly, and they they want it. You're, it's hard, you know. If you don't get them just right, they're gonna. So that's why I say it's everything's got to go. They've got to kind of go mm-hmm. swim away from here, come at it the side. They've got to eat it right. Mm-hmm. right. You've got to strip set it good, and then you got to, you know, once you strip set them, they don't you don't lose too many, but. You know, I mean, if you get a good hook in them, they don't, you know, it's not like a tarpon or something. They don't. Right. They usually have them, but, I mean, yeah. stranger stuff has happened. But, yeah, that's usually, but all that stuff's got to go perfect. Yeah. And it's like, that's what that what, that's what makes them so hard. Exactly. You know? That was a good day. The more aggressive ones are the worst because they're coming right at you just barreling down on it, yeah. right? You want that big fat one to come up and just eat it lazily and just turn and then go and then boom, you know, and it's done. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So how did so going back to I guess like the beginning of your musky fishing, uh, you know when you got into that, like how did you sort of uh, begin to learn all this stuff? Like what was the sort of beginning of your musky fishing career like? I was fortunate to have one of the first guys that ever did it around here, okay. kind of as a friend, and I I didn't really I was like yeah I'll, whatever you know I'll go you know and I caught one the first time on it was a 
decent fish. It was not like it was 36. I'm like, yeah, whatever, you know. I was like, that's it, you know. I was like, uh, you know. <laughs> that was being kind of a snob. Um, but we kept going at it, and then, it, you know, then we start moving bigger fish. And you went, okay, this is pretty cool. And then it's just years and years of just – and then I've got a lot – you know, I've got some of the best – musky people in the world as friends. I mean, I really, I probably have four or five guys that are, I have one, Gabe Schubert, that's probably the best, mus- I think, you know, in my opinion, is the best musky angler in the world. I mean, he's just got that gift, right? And I've learned mm-hmm. more from him and all, you know, we kind of have this click. There's a bunch of, we, now we're the old crusty guys. We used to be the young bucks, right? <laughs> now we're, you know, all the old crusty dudes that we all bitch about their young bucks, but um, <laughs> that's because we told them everything that they learned, yeah. you know, <laughs> totally. and then they're like, you don't know shit. And I like, remember where you were 10 years ago when, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. at a campfire as we were telling you the whole drill, you know, so <laughs> they, they'll never admit that. But no. anyway, so no. I'm really, you. really fortunate that way to have, you know, really good musky guides. I mean, we're kind of in the epicenter of it for yeah. – um, really good musky guys so i i've been blessed i've been you know learned a ton from those guys do you remember your first musky on the fly yep you said it was that 36 inch little 36 it ate a my kid named it it was a macho minnow it was just a big bucktail deceiver type thing um yeah this came off of a seam just like a musky supposed to do and i don't think i've caught a damn fish on that seam since then and it's probably one of the best looking spots on that float too but I don't think I've, you know, I've caught him close to there, but not exactly on that spot. But, mm. um, yeah, I can remember that fish. And then we landed it. And I was, you know, they don't fight really. They're not, they're not, you know, they're not tarpon or they're not anything saltwater. But, you know, they fight when they're big because just because they're big. But um, they're pretty short-lived on the fight. But, mm-hmm. yeah, so I can remember that fish. Yeah, just like it was yesterday. So, Nice. Yeah, I think everyone remembers the first one. Right? Yeah. Oh yeah. So. Big time. I don't think any. I don't remember Yoma's first one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Yeah, Yoma, your I first don't... one was thirty something, right? In- inches, thirty, thirty-three inches. Thirty-three. There you go. Yeah, it was a little. It was it, a little someone guy, catches it that. Was, it was, it was, it was nice, nice starter fish. You know. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah it was big for one, a trout. Right? So. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's a big <laughs> trout. Yeah. It was, it was a kind of interesting though. We were like, it was like midday, and we we had switched to the bass gear. Well, Yoma, you tell the story, man. Yeah, I, it, yeah. It actually, was a funny, funny story because we we were, you know, Pat. Like it was half day, and we're like, okay, let's take a rest, switch to bass, and so we switched our lines. And um, I put on a um, a game changer um, okay. to fish for bass. Didn't even have a leader on. I think it was like zero X um, line, and um, I started ca- casting into like this area where like the river kind of met. Well, I guess it was a little trib, maybe, and it was the water was just flowing yeah, yeah. around this big rock. I casted it in, um, stripped a few times, got a hit. Um, and then I'm like, oh, I think I got a hit. Or maybe I got snagged, you know, whatever. And then I cast it back in again. And then, yeah, it just hit. And it wrapped around its mouth and came out. And then the hook kind of just went boom. <laughs> and I held it up. <laughs> and that was it. Yeah, that was, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then that that was like, yeah. it was. That kind of made it sound like you didn't catch it. He caught the fish. The fish. Yeah, he down. caught the fish. Yeah. It came out, but he, yeah, he yeah. hooked it, right? Yeah, yeah sorry. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Once I caught it, then, yeah, yeah. then it came out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was going to say, wait a minute. He didn't catch that. It sounds like. Oh, okay. okay no, okay, no, 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 no. <laughs> the, the fish came to the pool. Yeah. But yeah, it was kind yeah, of Yeah, he got slimed. Like, yeah. 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 Oh, he I got, got slimed. slimed. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Good, good, good. Yeah, and it was, it was just wonderful. I And funny enough, I think um, our guide at the time caught, because he still had his musky gear on, he caught a bass the size of his the musky fly so we had a little picture where we compared the two and they were both oh, like 14 okay. inches long it was hilarious but yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. cool yeah, very cool i mean kip apart from their size what do you think makes musky so compelling like what do you think people are excited to go chase them i i think a lot of people don't know what the hell they're getting into is what i think but uh mm-hmm. you know it's hard it's so hard um and it's just that they're like the freshwater version of a permit but you can see a permit you can't see a musky Right, so I think it's harder because you're just blind casting all day long to a unicorn, mm-hmm. and um, but when it does happen, it makes it that much more special, right? I mean, so I think that's what really draws the people to it. A, the myth and the legend, and especially in the Upper Midwest here, um, with all the drama that there is about the fish, uh, with the old 
you know, world record scandals and all this other stuff that goes back and all the resorts. And, you know, it's just kind of a cool, cool thing in the upper Midwest that um, kind of got it started a little bit. And then people just realized how cool they were. And, um, yeah, they're just moody, badass mm -hmm. fish. I mean, that's that's exactly what yeah, they are. Absolutely. So, you know. That's pretty cool, yeah. And when did you start designing flies for them? Like, or sorry, wait. The first question is, um, why are they so selective? Like, you know, we fish for pike all the time. I know they're two different fish, mm -hmm. but like right. growing up when I was a kid, anyway, growing up in Ottawa, and I was like, well, they look the same and they kind of act yeah, in the same places, but yeah. they there's so much different from a feeding. <laughs> like, what what is it about muskie that do they just eat l bigger things less? <laughs> Correct, and yeah. there's less of them. There's not a lot of muskies. I mean, yeah. that's the big misconception. I mean, you know, you can go to some lakes and pound hammer handles, pike, you know, all day long and not even, you know, I mean, you can catch 50 pike in a, you know, they're 26 inches and it's like, oh, okay, you know. But uh, muskie needs 100 acres of water to grow big. So you do the math, there's wow. not a lot of them, right? So that's the other, that's the one thing. Um, they're moody and they only eat, and it's not like they're selective. It's, I, I think when they want to eat, they're going to eat. You could put a sock out there with a hook in it and catch one. I mean, it really, I, it, you, they're going to eat it, right? But right. it's when they eat, and um, I'm a real big firm believer in moon windows and wind, weather windows and just windows in general. Just kind of like, okay, this is when I think they're going to go. Now I'm wrong probably 85% of the time, but that 15%, is probably better than a guy just going out there and chucking, you know. So when something's going to happen, like a moonrise, moonset, moon or whatever, I want to be in a spot where I know there's a fish, right. and then you're just trying to add to that. So it's they eat big things. They only got to eat a couple days, maybe once a week in the summer. I mean, I don't, you know, depends on how big they are. So they don't eat that much. Um, they'll eat a big red horse and probably. Won't eat for three days. Yeah. In the summer, they probably got to eat more. Their metabolism's cooking. The water's warmer, all that stuff. Right. But in the fall, they don't. You know, everyone says fish them in the fall, which is true. It's probably the best period of time to do it. But they they're probably only eating once every three days. But it's probably eighty percent of that time it's in a window, and you have a pretty good idea when that's going to happen. You know, mm -hmm. so that's. But I've been on a perfect day. Storm fronts coming in. Sun's coming. You know. Moon's rising, sun's setting, nothing. You know, you go, oh, we're going to stick a pig tonight, and it's you don't even see a fish. So that's yeah. what, you know, either draws them to you or just says the hell with that. I'm not doing it anymore. So, you know. Mm -hmm. What makes the fall a good time to fish musky, like musky season? Um, the, the main reason is because they're producing eggs for next spring. And they have to eat to make sure that they have enough energy. And it's not, yes, they are stocking up res you know, reserves for the winter, but it's more about making eggs. I mean, it's all about making more muskies. So um, right. that's why the big females, and that's the one we're targeting, are more susceptible in the fall is because they're eating. they got to keep the egg wagon going. So they're just trying to keep their, their, you know, their metabolism up and going so they can make more muskies. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, because I always that hear that sense. you know yeah. fall is the best time to fish them, and I never really realized. Yep. I never stopped to go yeah. why. I just I just realized that right, right now. Yeah. <laughs> you know they know it's coming. That first cold snap in September. You guys probably get one every year, probably more than we do. But yeah. um, that that can be a man if you know it's going to drop, you know, forty fifty degrees overnight and get you know a little frost for a couple of days. It's you got to go, you know, because they get they get that first little hint of cold there. They get cranked up, so and then they kind of fall off a little bit once it warms, because it always warms back up. But then, come first of October, you know it's getting colder every night. It's freezing every night. The water temperature is dropping three or four degrees a day. Boom! It's it's on. You know. So. Okay, we're just gonna take a quick break, and then we're gonna come back to talk to Kip about uh, about the book. Today's episode is brought to you in part by Gills Fly Fishing International. Gills Fly Fishing International provides the destination fly fishermen with the best personalized trip planning and booking experiences possible. 
And they run FFI Magazine, an online fly fishing magazine with articles from your favorite fly fishing writers. The magazine is filled with tips, trips, and tight line stories to get you jacked for your next adventure out on the water. Visit flyfishinginternational.com to learn more. That's flyfishinginternational.com. Um, okay, why don't we like just talk about like kind of a day on the water, like what goes into the Coles Notes version, I suppose, of going to catch a muskie. Like what... What are the top sort of things you got to do when you're going out on the river for the first time and trying to catch a muskie or a lake? Um, like, what does a kind of day look like for you? Yeah, like, I just fish rivers. I mean, I do fish some lakes, but not not much. I'm a big river guy. I've always been and always will be. Um, you know, lakes bore me after all. You know, I could do it for half a day, but to sit out there all day just throwing at a weed line and not, you know, changing mm-hmm. the scenery would, you know, drive me to tears. So muskie yeah. hard fish is hard. Kind of with you. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's a good. That's, well, a, that's a good point, yeah. man. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, you know, I went brown trout fishing with this um, friend of mine that you know my other guy said you got to fish with this guy. He's the fishiest brown trout dude. I mean, he's caught more twenty inch brown trout in the driftless than you know in one season than I'll probably ever catch in my lifetime, right? But so I watched it. We went and. I'm like, he, I go, where would you, where would you find the big brown trout in that, in this spot? You know, it's a big eddy, you know, and I'm like, well, right on that seam. And I'm like, really? And he goes, yeah. And he goes, I go, well, that's where a big muskie would be if this was a bigger river. So, and one, an old timer up in Hayward once said, all the muskies is a big brown trout. So I'm looking for those seams, those ambush points a lot. They love wood. Um, so that's the kind of stuff. Just think of a big 25 inch brown trout and that's where a muskie is going to be. So in the fall, you know, so it kind of takes a little, you know, because most guys come from the trout fishing background. They're not, you know, but if I'm looking for those seams, those ambush points where they don't have to work really hard and um, the baits, you know, it's a conveyor belt and they're just going to come by and boom, and to follow the bait, you find the fish, you know, so the suckers all in the fall, just all drop back in a deeper water, slower water. Um, and that's kind of where the, the fish stack up, you know, they don't have to go but five yards to have dinner, you know. When they when they when the bell rings, yeah. So and then fly wise, you you said you know they'll hit just about anything if they're hungry and it's in front of them. So, you know, how do you go about picking your musky flies? You have a favorite pattern? Yeah, tell us. You find one that you think is good and fish it. You know, <laughs> there's no confidence. You know, I've run some flies for three years now. You know, they've got 15, 45 inch fish mm-hmm. on them. You know, and they just, I go, so we're just going to run the, you know, like two years ago, it was a, a fire tiger one, you know, and I right. just ran the hell out. That's all I fished all yeah. fall. You know, I just started catching fish on it, and I was like, we're going to run this thing till it, and I still have it. I still fish it. So, awesome. you know, you just kind of, you know, what colors do you like? You know, and I you either go all natural or you brighten it up with a fire tiger or something like that or a chartreuse mm-hmm. or you know, something bright, but, um, I do like a lot of pink and brown, like a sucker, like a red horse. Um, and then I like the brights, the, the fire tigers. One thing I've never really, I've done good on black and orange, but I've never done like good on a real, just like black, you know, the black. Flag. I, don't, yeah. I don't know why, but, um, yeah. So I, I yeah. you know, the tannish pinkish hue that, you know, just like a, like a, like a red horse and then bright, you know, fire tiger, hot pink, you know, pink and white is always good. Pink is never a bad, for some reason, muskies love pink, you know, and you put pink in any fly, it's going to, you'll probably catch fish. So it's more That's about awesome. putting it in front of them when they want to eat, you know, and then they're going right, to eat it. Right. But you design flies for Orvis, correct? I do some. I did, I've done some smallmouth, minnow, some minnow patterns and stuff for them. But yeah, I don't do anything for. A, you can't. They'll never run a good musky fly. I mean, any commercial fly tying thing will never, ever, ever have a, because it costs probably more to ship it than it does to, actually, you know, make the money on it. Because we were looking at them. I had my macho minnow, and they said we want to run this, but they couldn't figure out the packaging and how to ship it. And right. Right. You know, it's, you know, it's probably <laughs> five bucks to ship it. Well, I just lost all my margin, so you know. yeah, yeah, makes sense. Makes yeah, sense. yeah, they're such big flies, such meaty flies. Yeah. Yep, <laughs> um, exactly. We've kind of touched on it a bit, but like, what are some of the challenges that you know face the musky angler, um, or even a first time person going out? You know, I mean, the long days and the endless casts, I think, are probably the biggest thing, eh? 
Right. Yeah. It's the mental thing. It's in between your ears. Mm -hmm. Um, that's the hardest thing about it. I mean, the casting's tough too, but, um, you know, if you don't stay in the game, you'll never in the muskies know when you're not in the game. I mean, they just, they have a sense of it. They're going to show up when you're take a, you know, take a playoff, so to speak. And, uh, (laughs) You know, if you don't turn it, you know, the, the, you pull a fly out and one's going to come up and try to eat it, you know. So it's you have to stay mentally tough and stay in the game and just pound away and try to yeah. fight through the day because it's usually cold as hell. It's miserable. It's like steelhead fishing. It's miserable. It's, yeah. you know, and if it's a good day, if it's a nice day out, you're probably not going to see anything anyway because they seem to like the crappier weather. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what, what Adam Valley said. Adam Valley was our last guy, and that's exactly what he said. It's like the crappier the weather, the better. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they like that yeah. crappy cold fronts, low pressure, all that good stuff. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's probably the hardest thing, and then casting, of course. But, yeah. you know, you can water load it. I mean, there's ways around that. There's no – there's no rules when it comes to that. People get all bent out of shape about, you know. But when my elbow's hanging on for dear life, I don't care how yeah. I'm going to, you know, <laughs> just get it out there and strip it back, you know. So, yeah. Well, I could tell you it was one of my favorite days uh, last year. Was that was that musky day? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, I pretty mean, cool when it happens. I mean, it's it's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, it was, it was pretty cool. I mean, it was beautiful. I mean, I think we like after, now after saying, you know, talking to you and saying, you know, you're like, oh, they love w- low pressure systems, and it mm-hmm. was like a pretty shitty yeah. day, and and uh, yeah. you know, we did we did have, like Yelma did land that one fish, but you know, we, you know, we were moving fish all day, mm-hmm. so I think we were at a pretty. It was a pretty good, good day, yeah. you know, in terms of yeah, it was fun, it was man. Fun. Yeah. It was fun. Yeah, I think my big day last year was it was a moon, new moon, I think, or whatever. I can't remember, but. You know, we moved nine or ten fish, all big, and the guy never did land. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, it's That's like, tough. It was rough. It was, oh, it was rough. He had never done it before, and he wasn't a big fly fisherman. Yeah, got. Yeah, he had. He had four or five, and then just gargled it. You know, and you're just like. <laughs> you re- you really can't get discouraged <laughs> on a on a musky day. That's for sure. Yeah. You can't. I mean, if, you know, hey, I. All my guide buddies, we've done the same thing. We'll be out fishing yeah. together, and you know we can choke it just as much as the next guy. So I mean, it's it is what it is. So, and then of course the one you catch is always like the thirty-two inch. You know, <laughs> you know, it's it's one the land. You're like, oh come on, man. <laughs> Yeah. God, can so, you imagine uh, hooking, you know, eight or nine like beautiful musky and you don't land any of that's yeah, gotta it be crazy. <laughs> that's there a was, day was, right there. There was a big one. That's what I thought Aldo moved. There was a big one in the, like almost in the middle of, of the lake. That wasn't you. That was, I was Adam? Adam. I was uh I was on the camera. Oh, so but um one. but uh but it was pretty that was a pretty yeah. fish. It's pretty it was cool. out yeah. on a lake? Yeah. Yeah, we were on a lake. On, was it on a hump or something? Yeah, we don't know. Yeah. Oh uh, I, I don't know. I don't know the um yeah, I wouldn't know the. What time of year was it? Was it? It, it, was okay. fall, it was it was October. I can tell okay. you exactly yeah, when it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. sometimes they have to spawn. They'll go out in the middle of the lakes, okay. and just and they'll get underneath Cisco, and just mm. pound, and just pound them. You know, so those actually, guys will go. Up. It was the last weekend of September this year. Actually, that's when okay. we were there. Leaves had just turned. We had yeah, a cold. Yeah. We, we, we had a cold. Yeah. Um, Sure. You know, we had a cold front and a low pressure system, and yeah, 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 it was awesome. Cool, very cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's nice. There was something out there, that fish out in the middle, that you know, either yeah. bait or a hump something. or you know, something. So, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah it, it was definitely a featureless part of the lake. Yeah, like, you, yeah. You wouldn't really. Yeah, because we went. We're just kind of drifting. We went back along. out afterwards. We were like, okay, let's give it a rest, and we went back and nothing. So it was probably just there for something and then went back to the yeah it, once they're in though well that yeah that can be kind of transition time too mm-hmm. you know that early september they can kind of go okay i need to get into my winter spot so could have just hit a fluke right. or you know, who knows they're muskies it, who knows? it could have been what you described like the it was one of the first weekends where things got cold so maybe yeah. they were just they like just, yeah. sh- freaking out just, oh, yeah. yeah it's interesting to yeah. note yeah, God, there's so much to know about every single yeah, I love fish. It. Yeah, but the more you know, <laughs> the less you never. Know, like, yeah. If you ever fish yes. muskies, the 
let me know because I'll, you know, he'll tell you, you know, somebody, there's a guy out there calls himself a musky expert or something. I just like going, come on, dude, really? There's no such thing. You know I mean? It's just like, whatever, you know, it's like, yeah. <laughs> you know, no more, you know, you know more than I do probably, but <laughs> he, yeah, it's just, they're so yeah, they're looking s- weird, but they're anyway. mysterious and yeah, like there's just so much to them, right? Elusive. Well, yeah, they're mysterious. Yeah. That's a good, that's a good adjective i guess it's kind of like uh yeah. you know i mean you don't say you say you're not an expert but it sounds like you know a hell of a lot about musky my friend and you wrote a book yeah well, you wrote a book the orvis guide to musky on the fly um what correct. was what was that process like like how'd you decide to write a book i came up with a uh, i thought it was a better book idea and i ran it by rosenbauer at orvis and i said what do you think of this and he's like nah i don't like it and i'm like okay <laughs> Well, whatever you know because i talked to uh landed on colorado at a show and i'm like i'm kicking around writing some kind of book i'm not sure he goes you got to do it you got to write a book you got to write telling it's a game changer you got to write a book you know I'm like well, i don't know you know there's people that are smarter than me he goes ah it doesn't matter just write the damn book you know so so i came up with this idea and tom's like poo-pooed it and went man nah, i don't like it so and then he goes why don't you do something on muskies and i went well, yeah, I suppose I could do something like that. So he was, so I put together a uh, outline, sent it to him, and then he sent it to the publisher, and they said, "Looks good, let's do it." You know, nice. so that was the, that's how I did it, and um, it went pretty smooth as far as the writing. You know, I mean, that was the easy part, and then the hard parts, putting the damn thing together. And Tom was here for his show. Mm-hmm. And I said, we were out for dinner, and I said, I just finished the book. I just wrapped it up. It's done. You know, and he's, well, that was good. You know, it only took you a couple months. And <laughs> probably more than that. I did a lot of research. Yeah. Um, but he goes, now comes the hard part. And I went, yeah, whatever. You know, and he was right. It, it's the putting it together and, you know, all that stuff is the hard part. And how long did so. that part take? Um, you know, those guys are, the editors are, what, they're working on 50, 60 books at a crack probably, you know, so it's, um, I got it done like in, well, no, it would have had been March because the show's in middle March every year. So I got it done in March and then, um, it was supposed to launch the following July and then COVID and then, so it launched October 1st. So, yeah. So it's, it was probably about a two and a half year process, probably time it from let's do this to on a bookshelf two to three years, probably. So, okay, yeah, hmm. but I did a lot of research, you know, up to it, let a let a uh, read a lot of studies on them and talked to biologists and you know, so I did learn a ton of ton of stuff about them. They're, you know, the more you learn about them, the more, like I said, the less you know, but they're pretty amazing amazing fish the stuff that they do so and the research is coming like crazy now i mean it's just what the the technology like every every fish that probably gets planted from this day forward is probably going to have a dog chip in it yeah. you know so you can if they're fingerlings and then i'm sure someday they'll give the guides scanners and then we'll start doing the research you know we'll write down when we catch one we'll scan it okay it was planted in July of, you know, 2023, it was 18 inches and, you know, and, you, know cool. you know, and then you can track the growth and all that stuff. So it's pretty cool. And they're, they're doing studies in Lake Superior where they come out of the Duluth Harbor and they go out and eat in the summer and they've got like buoys out there pinging on them as they go in and out of the harbor and stuff. So it's pretty, pretty amazing what they can, can yeah. do. Yeah. Yeah. So hundred percent. Yeah. What was the yeah. uh, what was the book idea that Tom killed? Can you say? <laughs> yeah, so like I won Guy of the Year, right? And yeah. Whatever, I, you know, it's, it's nice and everything. But I'm um, <laughs> there was a book like done like years ago, Wisdom of the Guides, and I thought it'd be pretty cool if we'd like got like twenty of the Guides of the Years and just did like twenty questions or they're kind of like this only on paper, right? You know, and you just how'd you get into it? You know, your advice and blah blah blah, and then just you know. But it's like, eh, you know, so <laughs> Tom, I don't know. I love it. <laughs> I still think it's a good idea. I think it'd be pretty cool, but you know, so because I know a lot of them, I, think I it's got to cool. Yeah, I you know I got to know a lot of them, and they're really good dudes and women actually, and um, so yeah, it would be pretty. I thought I think it'd be kind of cool just to see how everyone approaches the game. You know, I mean, it's 
that's my thing is how do you approach your day or mm -hmm. your guiding and you know most of it's trout and stuff but it'd be you wouldn't have to be i guess you could get a bunch of saltwater dudes and fresh water and oh yeah totally water. i mean it'd be kind of cool yeah 100 yeah. percent. yeah maybe there's a podcast yeah. in there maybe we can we'll so, do a podcast together on that that'd be cool I can dig yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There we yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, it's kind of what you do anyway, right? Yeah. Yeah. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. So that's probably why he said no. Like, Who's all my podcast material? Screw that. I'm not <laughs> He's like, no, I, we won't be doing that. He's like, quick, call all the guys of the year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, see, that's that's two or three podcasts every year. I'm not gonna do that. You know? <laughs> I love that, man. I love that. He's a good dude, though. So he's, yeah. he was oh, yeah, super. Definitely... He came on the show. He's a good dude. Yeah, nice guy. Yeah, he's a great guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What was the uh, most fun yeah. part about writing that book? Because you know, like you were saying, a lot of research goes into it. Like, what was the best? Yeah, I think that was part of it. I think you know, really realizing and digging and talking to the biologist, and um, mm -hmm. that was kind of the big. You know, I knew kind of where I was going with it. Um, but yeah, talking, you know, just learning stuff that I didn't have any idea what they were doing or, you know, how they were researching them or, you know, the densities and all that kind of stuff that, you know, the 100 acre thing is part of that research. I didn't know that, you know, and it just kind of puts it all in perspective on how hard they are. And then one of the research goes, dude, there's not a lot of fish, you know, and we were talking about a certain section of river that we both knew. And he goes, yeah, we got a 50 incher there once out of season. The guy caught it and it died, you know. And so we have it; they have it mounted up in the office there. But he goes, there's probably from the dam down to this landing, there's probably only eight or ten big fish. And it's like a, it's like a, you no, know, it's got it's ten miles probably, you know. So that's and there's a lot of deep good water, you know. And you're like, really? He goes, yeah. I mean, there's just not a lot of you know that's, now really, like, that's really interesting you know yeah that's the 100 acre thing is super interesting yeah yeah so i mean yeah i mean like that's one fish per river mile <laughs> yeah, basically yeah yeah a big one you know 45 yeah 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 but yeah so i mean when you hook a big fish it's like yeah you mm. just won the lottery you know you just you don't know how special that yeah, fish exactly. is. So, I mean, most people do, but when you really start to do the math on it, and you're like, wow, that's kind of, it's kind of amazing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 We were up on the, um, uh, which river was it? The, uh, in Indiana, um, a couple summers ago. And, um, Oh, tippy, oh, tippy oh, canoe. The, um, tippy, the tippy canoe. canoe. Tippy, tippy canoe. canoe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, we came around a corner, we were floating it and we came around a corner and I saw like four, maybe five, like big, and then everyone's like, eh, they weren't that big in your head. You think they're big, but they were, they were like, I'm telling you, they were like 40 inches and they were all just yeah. sitting on top of each other along the sandbank, just chilling. And I was like, oh my God, like, look at all those muskies. And I started casting them. They wouldn't have anything to do with it. They they're didn't care. They're laid up. Yeah, yeah. They didn't care. Yeah. They're digesting the turkey dinner in the sun. Yeah. That's what they're doing. Yeah. I was just like, <laughs> I was like my mind. I was like, there was like, honestly, like four giant fish. And I was like, what is happening right now? And I couldn't hook them. Yeah, up, we used, on a lake here in the state, it was called Mille Lacs, which is one of our most famous lakes. You know, it's like the walleye, you know, everyone from the cities. But, you know, when, when my buddy Troy got me into it, he had a big ranger. And we ran up there, and there, on the north end, there was a big sand flat, you know. And he, he they would just sit in there. And, I mean, we rolled over probably 100 fish that were over 45 inches that day. It's a big lake, you know, it's like, it's a huge lake, but they would come in there and just lay up and digest. And then, I mean, we had, we would put flies right on their nose and just jig them, you know, just to get, try to get piss one off. And, you know, and he goes, well, what do we, you know, and I went, like, this is sucks. And he goes, well, I'm not leaving fish to find them. It only takes one. And I went, you're right. It only takes one, you know, so that was always his big saying, you know, I'd be going, this sucks, dude. You know, I don't want to do this shit anymore. And he's like, it only takes one, you know, so, you know, every once in a while, you know, I'll be like, stay in there, guys. It only takes one, you know, and I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe I said that, you know, but. <laughs> It's like when you start catching well, yourself saying things your dad said, you're like, oh, God. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, no, 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 no. And reverting to my father and shoot me now, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 
Love it. Okay, Kip, we've yeah. got we've got five questions that we ask everybody at Whoa, the end of the show. We're there already? And it's uh, yeah, we're there. We're there, Yelma. We, we've been, Jesus. I can believe it. We've been, been an hour, man. We've been chatting for an hour oh. about musky, which blows my mind because that flew by. <laughs> um, I just need to get out fishing. It's crazy, man. Um, I know. Yeah. <laughs> no, nothing's. None of our seasons are open right now. Yeah, so we're everything's just like, closed. Yeah. Yeah. And it's cold. My uh, wife works uh, <laughs> Easter Sunday, and then my kids are gone. So one's going to be in Florida, and the other one's on who knows. And I'm like, oh, well, I'm going to be home alone for Easter. I'm like, so I went out to the lake where I had bluegill fish and looked, and it was it was ice free, and it's supposed to get warm. And I'm like, I'm going to go out and have a little church service out on the boat <laughs> on my Easter Sunday. <laughs> that's think. awesome. So that's going to be my first time out. Yeah, that's awesome. Hopefully they're in, but. Yeah, Grab a bag of mini yeah. eggs and catch some bluegill. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Some peeps, throw them out there. Some yeah. peeps. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so yeah, these questions we ask we ask every single guest uh, on the show at the end, and, and these are just five more questions. Okay. Mitch's Fishies five. Uh, so we're going to ask you them now, and the first one is, and if it isn't musky, I don't know what the hell is going on, but the first question is, what is your favorite fish and why? It's not musky. Is it bluegill? It's not. <laughs> it might be, it's blue, probably. I love them. I just that. that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Because it's the lake I fish is gin clear. Yeah. It's like tarpon fishing with a three way. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's just I just it takes me back to when I was a kid, and it's my kind of two weeks to really yeah. You know, because I don't fish. I, I just I haven't thrown a musky fly probably in two and a half three years. Yeah. You know, I haven't. I've always been rolling the boat and guiding, and I don't get to fish much anymore. So that's kind of why it's special. And then, um, yeah, that's probably my. I love smallmouth a close sec. Yeah. I mean, those mm-hmm. two are right up there. But yeah. um, muskie's in there. But it's like I don't get to fish much anymore. My my buddy that I used to fish with died here a couple of years ago, and we used to have muskie weekend in. He would reluctantly roll, but at least he would roll for a couple hours, and they got the fish. So I, that's so. Anyway, that's probably why they're at the lower the and, and they're a pain in the ass. But other than that, but and bluegills are just friendly, happy fish. So yeah, I yeah. love that. I love <laughs> yeah. that. I love that. Author of Musky on the Fly, favorite fish, bluegill <laughs> on a three way. Yeah. That's great. That's, <laughs> they're good bait too. I guess. I, don't know. <laughs> I love awesome. bluegill. I, I know exactly yeah. what you mean. They're super fun. Um, Okay, so the number two is if you could fish anywhere in the world right now, assuming it's the best time of year to go there and there's no COVID, where would you go and why? Oh, boy. I've got, like, I'm going to Argentina, so that would have been number one probably, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Now, I'm trout fishing, but the Dorado thing would probably be up there, and then the other one would be Iceland. My kids and my wife went there a couple years ago. They just had a long layover. They went to Denmark. Because they're Danish, and I was, uh, and my kids said that it's pretty, Iceland's pretty badass. We should go there fishing sometime. And I, and <laughs> another one of my friends died there fishing, which would be kind of he drowned there, and him and his wife both died. It was a tragic story. It was, yeah, it was rough. My buddy died in March. My good musky buddy, and then this couple died in May in Iceland on their dream fishing trip. You know, so it was oh, no. a rough yeah. year, but yeah. that would be the only reason I wouldn't go to Iceland is just because, like, yeah, Brian, you know, but, um, right. or just to honor him, I guess. But yeah, it was a crazy spring, but, uh, yeah, those are, that's yeah. it. So, do your kids fish? Yeah. My daughter, uh, my daughter's going with me to Slough Creek this year. I haven't been out there in probably a decade. And I had clients that said, can you put together a trip to Slough Creek? And I went, which is in Yellowstone, if you're not familiar with it. Um, and I went, yeah, let me look into it. I don't know. You know, it's going to take out of my season, you know, because we're going in August, which is prime smallmouth time. But um, I went, yeah, I haven't been there. I should go there. And we're taking horses in. It's going to be really nice. It's going to be pretty cool. So she's never really been to Montana. She's been to the Bighorn, which it's good, but it's not Montana. It's kind of ugly. Uh, where my kid has been with me to the guide rendezvous with Orvis and um missoula and stuff like that so i'm gonna take her but yeah they both fish but they're not my daughter's probably a little bit more crazier about it than my son you know my son would go to muskie camp every year just to hang out with the guys and you know and fish and sit by the fire and that kind of stuff but mm-hmm. that's probably his favorite thing is muskie fishing so yeah i love it um okay yep. number three is what is or uh, what's one of your favorite or best fishing memories from over the years. Uh, the one that I haven't had yet. 
Oh, nice. I love hey, that. Right I like on. That. Yeah. Keep I've had so many really, really, really cool stories and funny stories. Like I had a guy, one of my good clients had a, a bad heart up in Ontario. He's like valve tour and he didn't even know when he gets home and he's calling me. I'm coming home from the room. He goes, I'm back now. You know, he used to be a, he used to go to Canada and then we'd start our season up and we'd do 10 to 15 trips a year. And um, he goes, yeah, I just got back. Well, I didn't feel very good up there. Well, that night is valve tour and, and his heart and he damn near died, you know? And then I took him out like four, right at the end of the year. And we weren't, you know, 10 minutes into it, and he caught a nice small month. And I was, like, in tears. I go, welcome back, Gary, you know, and it was pretty – that's a pretty cool story. But, yeah, I mean, there's going to be some really, really – you know, I'm really looking forward to Slough Creek with my daughter. and But most of them entail my kids are really, really, really good clients that I've had forever. Mm -hmm. So I love yeah. that. I love that. <laughs> cool. Yeah, the one that has a gun yeah. is great. Um, number yeah. four is why do you fly fish? Why do you fly fish? What do you get out of it? This kind of goes back to that question you asked me, well, how'd you, how'd you get into it? You know, yeah. and I'm like, I, that's a weird, <laughs> um, I, I, <laughs> yeah, I guess I have to, you know, it's part of my DNA. Yeah. I don't, you know, I'll spin fish a little bit, but not much anymore, you know? Yeah. Um, it's just yeah. my passion, I guess, you know, guiding and fishing, you know? Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. It's who you are. Yeah. Much to my wife's dismay, I would say, you know, but anyway, but, you know. <laughs> that's... I love it. I love it. Um, okay, yeah. so the last uh, the last Mitchie's Fishies 5 here for you, Kip, is what fly pattern best represents you and why? If you were a fly, what would you be? Uh, I'm probably a popper because I'm kind of loud and obnoxious, but then I'm also fishy. So that's kind of, I'd probably be a bass popper. Guess, <laughs> that's awesome. Actually, I think that's the first time we've ever heard that. on the show yet. I don't think we've ever heard. I don't popper. know. Like, I don't remember. No, I love that. That's great. Bass that's popper. good. Be the first day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm loud. I'm loud, kind of obnoxious, fat and, you know, I'm fishy. fishy. I, guess. I so love it. You know, there you fishy. go. I think that's a great answer, man. I'm a big yeah, fan yeah, of that. I like that answer a lot. I love that's that. That's awesome. And I love what? fish and popper. Oh man, yeah. me too. I mean, you're you're. I think we're we're trying maybe one day turn that into a book. Everybody's all yeah. of our guests like what fly. Yeah, book. that'd be great. That's or a really coffee cool table idea, book, actually. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you know, I have to be a page or two, and you get yeah. a exactly. You know, Kip Veith, a popper. <laughs> and then we got to go back and listen to our early shows and and just like hold our heads and like, oh my god, I can't believe I said that. I believe I said that. <laughs> Those early episodes. Yeah. <laughs> It's like fly tying, I would think. You look at some of the flies you tie when you're first, I don't have any left because I've thrown them all away, but you look at the fly and you go, oh, my gosh, you know, and you thought that was good, you know, and you're like, eh, you know, yeah, but. That's that's progression. You know, yeah. it comes with practice. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Kip, you know? man, thank you so much for coming on the show. Like, it's been a blast getting to meet you and, and chat about muskie yeah. and, and you're fishing down there and. uh Hopefully one day we can connect, you know, hit the river together. Yeah, I need fun. to get up there. I interviewed yeah. a couple guys from Canada for the book, and yeah, I'm intrigued to say the least because no one fly fishes for muskies up there hardly. So yeah, there's a ton um, of good musky water. There's a, there's a, oh, yeah, yeah, there's a ton of musky water. Um, well, mm -hmm. in the region where me and Yilma were were fishing, but also much closer to Toronto. Yeah, and are in the Kawarthas and just like two hours east of toronto driving to ottawa ottawa yeah. like the ottawa area and where me and mitch grew up in ottawa musky place. that's yeah. yeah one of them guides on ottawa right is yeah. that the one that goes to montreal ottawa to montreal or whatever it's yeah the big, ottawa river is a big river, musky right? river yeah. yeah big river yeah yeah and he guides on that and then the other one starts um the french oh yeah the french river yeah. oh yeah like yeah. what is it georgian bay or whatever that is yeah, yeah up in yeah. that yeah. french river so yeah. that sounds pretty cool the ottawa looks pretty you know pretty daunting i would think with a fly yeah you just gotta find so. you just gotta huge. find those spots but yeah it's it's big yeah. it's big it's I mean, like a big been lake. Doing it forever so i mean yeah he would know but yeah the french looks pretty cool and oh, yeah. i had a client that smallmouth fished it years ago he said, if you want to trip up there i'm in because <laughs> that thing was, that was one of the best places i was beautiful and you know so the french, that, is, yeah. the french is the french is awesome it can be it can also be pretty daunting in terms of like um um like pretty gnar gnarly gnarly um like rap rapid sets and oh, okay whatnot. but okay. but there are some sections where it's calm and flat and and you know but it is real the whole thing has great fishing whether yeah, it's yeah. walleye or smallmouth or musky pike like there's it's a good it's a good system. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, but no one will be up there for another year, huh? Probably. Doesn't look like it. <laughs> it's going to be good when it, you know, it's like Belize. You know, once it opened up, it was off the charts because everybody was fishy at about, you know, nine months off. So they didn't know what it. Who guided you in Belize? I had Lincoln Westby for a week, and then I had um, uh, Gordy out of El Pescador for, he's my one of my favorite guides down there. Right, nice. um, he's a young kid. And him and I just yell at each other for a week. It's a lot of fun. We have a good time. So yeah, he's yeah. a good, he's a That's lot awesome. of fun. So and he's a pretty good permit nice. guide too. Yeah. So um, it's a cool, nice. it's an easy in, easy out. It's it's pretty convenient. You know, and the fishing's pretty good too. So and right. it's not in the store. Yeah, asking because you know. <laughs> right. Yeah, Yoma's asking because he's got a buddy who guides. He's got yeah. an old old um, university buddy who. Uh, Okay. Who guides, there. His, Who guides down there now? Yeah. <laughs> he lives down Where's there. Where's he guide out of? He guides out of, oh my God, the name Tarpon is K. Tarpon, Tarpon K. Tarpon K Lodge. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I caught fish right by Tarpon K. So oh, nice. we're on the yeah. Yeah. next yeah. resort north, so on Blue Horizon. So, yeah. 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 Nice. Yeah. Kip, this is like shameless promotion yeah. time. Like, where can people find your book? Yeah. How can people mm -hmm. book you as a guide? Like, what, what's, the you know, what's your email? Oh, okay. what, like, uh, how can people find you? Most order stores have the book, or you can go onto my website um, and get a personalized autographed copy if you order it on there. Um, it's wildwoodfloatrips.com, and you can go to that website in there, or it's kip at wildwoodfloatrips.com is my email address. So uh, give me a call or shout if you want to want to get out or you have any questions or anything. I'm more than happy to do that, too. So, yeah. And Aldo, I love your name. Oh, yeah. <laughs> thanks, man. Because <laughs> yeah, I grew up in southern Wisconsin, and I've been, okay. you know, and I've been to the shack, and I've he's, I taught a homeschool course on all the Leopold, and so I just I the name is I was going to say something the other day, and I didn't, but uh, yeah. oh, right on. I'm, yeah. yeah, I'm actually I'm named after my great grandfather, who was a pretty hardcore fisherman, not a fly sure. fly angler, but uh, yeah. but yeah, he. Uh, he was an outdoorsman, big time. Yeah, so right. I think yeah. it's in it's in my genes, you know. Yeah, yeah. Aldo was the head of all conservation, so I mean, yep. he's the guy. So yeah, it was pretty cool. So anyway, that's my plug, I guess. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks, man. Okay. I'll tell my mom. Yeah. <laughs> all right, man. Well, thanks again, right, and, and you take uh, care. yeah, have a good yeah, night. Thanks so much, gentlemen. I appreciate it. It was a lot of fun. Oh, absolutely. Agreed. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. See you later. See ya. Bye. Bye. Kip, such a nice guy. I love that. It's awesome talking about musky. Yeah. Uh, that was fun. Oh, super fun. Um, I definitely yeah, I ha had no idea. Well, I mean, musky aside, if we're going to the beginning of the interview, um, I had no idea there was so many spring creeks <clears throat> in the Midwest of uh, America. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. Like, like when I think of Wisconsin, I don't think, I don't think uh, spring creek trout fishing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. Totally. I didn't either. I had no idea about that. It's crazy. Yeah. I think I think Green Bay Packers and cheddar cheese. Yeah, cheddar cheese, yummy. Love some cheddar cheese. <laughs> yeah, no, he was. It was. It was great. Um, and I, I love the things because I know I know we went out with Adam Valley and having kept reiterate all those things that we learned is great. You know, it makes me more comfortable and confident next time when I get out there. Maybe I'll catch a forty inch this time or forty five. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah, it's kind of like that's a really good point, Yuma. It's like um, re like it's almost like. You know, reinforcing knowledge you've already you've already heard. Yeah, but great. maybe a slightly different perspective. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, um, I didn't even think about it. Like, uh, like them as big brown trout, find them in the same places that you would a big brown. That was but new to me. Yeah. Makes a ton of sense. Mm -hmm. In a river. And the whole spring thing, like the whole like, oh yeah, they're more active in the fall because they're getting ready to spawn, in, or they're getting ready, preparing themselves for their spawn in the spring. Yeah. Is that yeah. Right? yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, you said yeah, that. Yeah. that right. Yeah, no, it's 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 cool. They're cool fish. Yeah, like I said, it's uh, just kind of, you know, it's like it happens at the same time as steelhead. It's like, and what are we gonna do? Are we gonna go steelhead or go musky fishing? Yeah. We should go That's musky fishing a, a little bit. I I mean, I had so much fun steelheading this year. That was the only thing. We should oh, make some time for musky. We should definitely make some time for musky. Um, yeah. A hundred percent. Are you guys uh, fishing? Aren't you going at Wednesday all the time? Wednesday. Well, today is Monday, yeah. uh, March 29th. This show is coming out on the 1st yeah. of April, which is Thursday, and I'm going out the day before this with Matt Martin. 
Right on. We're gonna, you go, go, we're we're gonna, gonna go swing the credit. Um, nice. Yelma, I mean, if you want to play hooky, yeah. you should come. Yeah, you quit your job. You're good. Call in sicky. <laughs> I should call in sicky. Yeah, go I'm shooting a, Thursday, go so go catch a be... steely. Catch a steely. Oh, you want to catch a steely? steely? I'll shoot it. <laughs> no, not Arnold, shoot it. So yeah, let's shoot, shoot it. Shoot it. Jesus. Oh, no, man. with the camera. Oh my. God. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good oh, lord, good. man. Conservation. Well, I feel like I feel like with all that rain we just got, you know, yeah. it might have brought some fishies in the system, or got a ton of rain. It might be. It might encourage some dropping back. Yeah, the, the guys who have already spawned. Or maybe yeah. we'll catch a sucker like Adis today. Yeah. Yeah, and if we don't catch any fish, we can play golf. Whoa! Because <laughs> <it's a, laughs> there's a golf course there. Um, I can't believe Mitch is into golf. I'm still like... I'm kind of getting into it, I think. You, you I wouldn't think let I'm, me watch Saturday Night Live because you want to watch I want to watch golf. golf, man. At the end of a day of fishing in a hotel room, golf is awesome. Hey, everyone. It's Stevie Wonder. Eat some pizza and... Oh, Aldo put sunglasses on and Yelma called him Stevie yeah. Wonder because no one can see him. Yelma doesn't make any sense. Hey, it's Stevie Wonder. No one can see him. Hey, it's Stevie Wonder. Everyone's like, okay, what? it's yeah. Stevie Wonder, I guess. No, but I'm with Mitch, man. Like, you put yeah. on some golf at the end of a fishing day, you yeah. are sleeping pretty quick. Yeah, after some pizza. After, it's like, just a, so local cozy, pi- a local you know? pie. You're like in the hotel room, you're like, yeah. mm, baby. Took a shower. I mean, that was <laughs> steelheading. Like, steelheading's the best after when you can go back to the hotel, take a hot shower, eat a pizza, a local pie. And watch golf. Mm-hmm. That is a great end or, of the day. Or barbecue. So, yeah. <laughs> Take off your glasses. I can't see you. That was pretty great. <laughs> no, now I'm keeping them on. Now that well, you said something. I think he looks There's cool. No I think he looks cool. <laughs> I, You know, I feel Oh, cool. I'm not saying he doesn't look cool. But um, guys, listen, it's, uh, I, I want to mention one thing. Yeah, please. If I if I could. Um, you know, trout season's, we were getting close. Yeah, yeah so close. Um, and we were all part of that... Uh, you know, cut the crap, save the credit. Mm-hmm. Um, little uh, Zoom chat earlier yeah. this week, and uh, yeah, if uh, if you guys want to go to our Instagram and check out the link to sign the petition to stop the wastewater uh, treatment plant and learn more about it, I won't drone on about it now because there's too much to cover. But uh, yeah, learn about it. People are trying to dump sewage into the Credit River. Let's uh, let's try and stop them. Absolutely, yeah. Save the West Credit because it's just a ridiculous thing that's happening. Like, come on, like what? You know, I mean, like that we shouldn't have to sacrifice, you know, a river for like development or, you know, figure something, figure something out. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you want to build houses like, I don't know, don't shit in the river. I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's just uh, such a sensitive river. Like, I don't know. It's just, I don't know. It doesn't, no. it doesn't feel right. It doesn't seem right. No. So we got to do what we can to, to fight for it um, and be the voice for fight the river. Fight for our little bricky friends. A hundred percent. A little bit of savings. I don't get it. Yeah, and then uh, also um, we're doing a hosted trip at the end of September, or not end of September, at the end of the summer in middle of September, and speaking of brookies, speaking of brookies, and two of the trips have already sold out, but there's one trip left, which is a week long trip into the heart of Tomogamy in Northern Ontario to go fish brook trout with Tomogamy Outfit and Co. And it's a like a week of just fly fishing in the interior, paddling into the middle of nowhere. Um, eating amazing food over a fire cooked by your guide um, and, um, you know, making fun of Yilma. Nah, we're not going to make fun yeah. of you. For <laughs> no, no, that, that, that is allowed. Okay. Um, but to, to add to that, the, the, the... No, no, that is allowed. That is allowed. That is allowed. <laughs> um, it's, it's such an amazing mm-hmm. me, 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 meandering river that yeah. is just, just lovely and lush um, and bright green and sometimes there's gin clear spots so you can see these oh, little yeah. brookies and True. it's just it is fantastic although i caught really nice sized brookies there um you guys got nice you know. fish you guys came back with oh, some yeah. sweet our guides, pictures our, our guides our guests caught mm-hmm. some guests, yeah. awesome fish and, awesome uh, fish. and these are like yeah. true in the middle of ontario brook trout like it's like these yeah. fish are awesome you they're know they're wild yeah. and they're you're wild, like, wild. You're wild in a beautiful wild, 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 place wild. you know and then at the end of the day we'll sit around the fire and we'll drink some scotch and eat some Eat some hot dogs over the fire and, and yeah. just hang out. It's gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna be a blast. And I hope uh, I hope you guys it's will, so will join us. beautiful. I don't know how to else to describe this. It's it's picturesque, classic, just brook trout, babbling brook fishing. Like it's yeah. gorgeous. I mean, we've done it. Tw- you know, we've done it twice. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, when we did it the first time, it was kind of a scouting trip, and we fell in love. And last year, when we really got to sink our teeth into the river, it was mm-hmm. it was awesome. And and now this year, getting to do three trips. Like Mitch said, two of them are kind of already spoken for, but the first, but the first dates are still open. Um, Which dates September, are those? Check out, 
check out SoFly.ca. Um, it's uh, September sixth to September tenth. So those are so, yeah, that one's basic- free still. That one's open. That one's wide open. Okay, sweet. But yeah, no, it's a it's a great time. You know, Tamaki is a beautiful place that we've all fallen in love with, and Eric is such a good host. And yeah, man. Absolutely. So yeah, check out SoFly.ca and, and go up to the hosted trip section. You can read all about this wow. trip and the details and all that stuff. But it'd be super cool if you guys uh, you know got a little got a little group together or come solo and we'll go we'll go do this thing and it'll be fun. Um, yeah, it's gonna be a blast. And the TOC new building that they have there, like we were just up there uh, for some ice fishing recently, and it's it's wild. Like it's such a nice it's, nice building. Nice. You know, you got a nice oh, room and you know it's just fun to hang out there. Yeah, they've done a really 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 great job of that. Uh, main outfitting building in Tomogamy now. So, yeah. Anyways, that's that's all the plug we'll do. Uh, that's all the plugging we're gonna do for you. But um, you know, we'll put links to the stuff in the show notes as well, so you can you can go into the notes um, on whatever app you use and read all about Kip, where to find his book, where to find his guiding services, Wildwood Float Trips, and um, West Credit, how to sign that petition and help, and then also how to come on a fly with a trip with us. That's everything. Everybody, you know what? Thank you so much for listening. And um, we hope everybody's staying safe out there and having fun. Uh, stay safe and have fun. Maybe that's maybe that's my new sign off. Um, <laughs> you sound like a uh, participation. <laughs> Pretty yeah. <laughs> body, break. Body, body break. Body break. Body yeah. break. Did they ever say anything? Body break. Keep fit and stay safe. Keep Is that fit what they used and to say? Fit yeah, fun. Uh, <laughs> keep fit. Stay th- body break. No. I don't know. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> Probably no, not. not. Uh, but Al anyways, Johnson and Joanne McLeod. Oh, Al yeah, Johnson, well. Joanne McLeod. They were awesome. Yeah, you're right, yeah. eh? There's, yeah. Yeah. God, I love that. Um, everybody, thanks for listening. And uh, that's it for me, Mitch. <laughs> Aldo? That's it for me. So just laughing about body break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks, not. everybody. Uh, yeah. uh, is it my turn now? Yep. <laughs> well, I didn't hear anything. We never, have a clean in- we never have a clean outro anymore. You know what I mean? Okay, like, what's- here we go. Okay. Oh, my God. Yelma? <laughs> oh, uh, th- thanks for listening, guys. Take care. <laughs> <laughs> you can find all of our content at sofly.ca reach out via email by sending your questions or comments to info at sofly.ca find us on instagram at the sofly crew thanks for listening